You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Boss? Yeah, Stevens? Got the feeder belt running again. <laughs> Already? All it was was a bad bushing. I had Walters fix it. <sighs> Henley will be glad to hear that. How'd you do it? Well, the manual said replace the main bearing, but I know that sound, just like the old unit. Yeah, the one that used to go down all the time? Good thing we saved the parts. <laughs> we reground a roller and oiled it up. That's all she took. Well, nice work, Stevens. Real nice. Tell Walters thanks for me. No problem. Hey, Dick, how's it going? Oh, looking good, Mr. Hanley. I got the conveyor belt running. Should be back to capacity. Great. That'll bring the numbers up again. <laughs> Ought to make the old man happy, huh? Oh, I don't know about that. Well, we do our best. I got me a real team here. Sure you do. Some of the boys, they know more about the plant than anybody. Been here longer than the old man. Walter Hanley, please come to the main office. Supervisor Hanley to Mr. Whipple's office right away. Second time this morning, huh, Mr. Hanley? Maybe you're getting a promotion. Uh, the old man just keeps pushing. He's on an efficiency kick, wants a 10% increase. For the quarter? For the week. Yeah? How are we supposed to do that? Don't ask me. Must be that computer of his. Some computer. I mean, numbers are one thing, but I mean, there's a limit. A man can only do so much. I'll tell Whipple you said so. Now, don't do me any favors. I got one more year to go, and then it's pension time. You? You'll never retire, Bob. You want to bet? I got a date with some big mouth bass waiting right up at the lake. I can hear him call. That's not fish. That's the old man telling you to whip your boys like government mules. Well, then you can tell him this. You tell him to come down on the floor and work a shift sometime. He'll find out what it's like. We're not machines. I know you're not, and I'm glad of it. You're doing great, Bob. Uh, try to squeeze out another 5% if you can. That ought to keep him happy for a while. And tell the boys I appreciate the good work from all of them. These are the players, with or without a scorecard. In one corner, Mr. Dickerson, in charge of the shift at his factory, Walter Hanley, the plant manager, and the individual you're about to meet, Wallace V. Whipple, the boss and CEO of the company. All of them men. In the other corner, machinery, both old and new. And the game? It happens to be the historical battle between flesh and steel, between the brain of man and the product of man's brain. We won't make book on this one and predict no winner. But we can tell you that for this particular contest, there will soon be standing room only at a very special arena found only in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Brain Center at Whipples, starring Stan Freeberg, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Greetings to our happy family of shareholders from the Whipple Manufacturing Corporation. <clears throat> this year, we are proud to bring you the story your company's progress by means of this special video produced by yours truly, Wallace V. Whipple. And I can assure you, family members, that what you're about to view represents a stunning, exciting new direction. But first, let's visit our main plant here in the Midwest, where our employees are busy manufacturing pipe fittings, automatic temperature control devices, and the various accoutrements of our product line. This is one of 11 principal assembly facilities. I call your attention to the vast number of workers required to maintain and operate just one facility. In this plant alone, your company employs 3,827 able-bodied men and women. Added to the ten other Whipple plants across the country, we employ a total of close to 30,000 personnel. 
Our weekly payroll for this highly trained army of workers is several million dollars. But enough boring arithmetic. <laughs> Good evening, friends. Welcome to my office, the nerve center where I, Wallace V. Whipple, personally supervise this vast operation. I've decided to address you personally via this videotape with exciting, in fact, stunning news, which I believe you'll agree amply demonstrates how we at Whipples are marching toward a new tomorrow, where the future is so bright, you'll have to wear sunglasses. <laughs> <clears throat> but before you put on those shades, cast your eyes at the floor of our main assembly plant. Follow me. We can see it from my window. Cumulative four and four tenths miles of work area, $111 million worth of safety upgrades this year alone. Not to mention the expense in shoe leather. <laughs> put the camera back on me. Put the camera back on me, that's it. <clears throat> now open the curtain. And what's this, you might ask? This sleek, futuristic object behind me? Some sort of space-age control panel? So many bells and whistles. Never seen anything like it, you say. That's because it's never been seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, stockholders, and members of the Whipple corporate family, Feast your eyes on this. I give you the X109B14. This single modified transistorized, digitalized, totally automatic assembly unit eliminates 6,100 jobs, 73 bulky and inefficient old fashioned machines. 81,000 needless man hours per work week and countless millions of dollars each year for employee health services, hospitalization, and workers' compensation. <clears throat> also, employee insurance, employee welfare, and employee profit sharing through vested matching funds. As of tomorrow morning, the first model X109B14 will be placed in operation at our main plant. Within six months, our entire production facility here will be totally automated. Tomorrow, the world. Oh, and one other thing. Take a look at these slides. Lights. This is one of three cafeterias in our Oregon production plant. Busy, busy, busy. Here are the food trucks arriving. Here's the kitchen staff, the cooks in the kitchen, and here are the dumpsters filled to bursting with trash and refuse after a typical lunch. 800 tons of food consumed over an 11 month period and tons of garbage for the landfill. Oh, the waste, the waste of it all. Lights. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what can replace and what will replace? 800 tons of food, one can of simple machine oil. Wholesale price, 68 cents. Ladies and gentlemen, Whipples moves forward to a new plateau of profit, progress, and posterity. In a sense, we have just shed ourselves of the anchor, the heavy, heavy, heavy anchor, the albatross, if you will, of human labor. Whipples will now operate from a computerized brain center with machines exactly like this one. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> this concludes our year-end report. Thank you very much. Well? Well what? Well, what do you think, Hanley? Will this put the stockholders on their feet cheering, or will it? Mm, not that I need any particular encouragement along these lines. The videotape speaks for itself. It does indeed. What's the matter, Hanley? You didn't care for it? Mr. Whipple, my duties have to do with management. Something wrong with the lighting? The soundtrack? I'm an engineer, not a drama critic. I'm not asking you to give it four stars, Hanley. 
But as a plant manager, I would assume you'd have a point of view as to the content. Frankly, I would have expected at least some degree of enthusiasm. Sorry, sir. Having to do with the fact that it's a... It's a most definitive and incisive report on what we plan to do around here. Now, does it or doesn't it give you the lay of the land? You can answer that, can't you? Oh, it gives me the lay of the land, all right. And? Looks like a pasture to me. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? You actually think you can automate this place in six months? Closer to four months would be a more reasonable guess. <laughs> a lot of things are going into the old scrap heap, Hanley. Time clocks, for example. There won't be anybody around to punch them, in or out. <laughs> I think we'll donate them to a museum. <laughs> a museum? Uh, something, Hanley? Something. Something like a lot of men without jobs. That, unfortunately, is progress, Mr. Hanley. Now, you're a pretty solid man when it comes to quality control and assembly line planning. But when it comes to the aforementioned progress, you're a foot dragger. But not my little sweetheart here. Hmm. X10, you and I are going to see a great deal of one another. Indeed, we are. Indeed, 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 we are. Yes. The technicians are here, Mr. Whipple. Already? You said right away, sir. I know I did. Uh, <clears throat> all right, send them in. I'll be sorry to say goodbye to my dear little X10. Where's it going? Eh, just downstairs on the main floor. Once we clear out the walkways and workstations, she'll fit right in, all by herself, at the heart of everything. The heart, huh? The very center of production. In control of it all, that's right. Like the Aztecs. What? The Aztecs, down in Mexico. I read about it. They built statues to their gods. They sacrificed their people to them and cut out their hearts. And when there were no more people, that's all that was left, the statues. With no one to worship them anymore. Come in. We're here to move the unit, Mr. Whipple. How are you going to get it down there? Same way we got it up. On the freight elevator. We'll have to disassemble it in sections, I guess. Yes, well, we'll be careful. That baby is the future of this company. Yeah. Treat it like a god. You know what your trouble is, Hanley? You're holding on to the 20th century so tightly, your knuckles are white. And what century are you holding on to? The 19th? The 21st. To live in this new world, we need to jettison old baggage. Throw off the dead weight. And that includes the wholesale firing of 20 and 30 year men? Without regrets? Regrets, indeed. This has to come with regrets, huh? Well, I'll let you handle the regrets, Mr. Hanley. Yes, that'll be your new responsibility. Make a little sign for your desk. Mr. Walter Hanley, plant manager in charge of regrets. <laughs> You're so hell-bent to replace men with machines. Did it ever occur to you that there's a trade-off? Pride for efficiency? Pride? Pride craftsmanship. What a man feels when he tries to make something as well as it can be made. What do you suppose that bloody machine feels? Anything? Anything at all? What the devil can I do with pride? Can it? Bottle it? Package it? Market it? How? I'm not selling pride here. I'm selling product. Your father, God rest his soul. <laughs> Go ahead, Hanley. What about my father? Your father ran this plant for 40 years. He had an eye for profit, and nobody could accuse him of inefficiency. Go on. But he had something else on his mind, too. Tell me, Hanley. Tell me what else he had in his mind. Goodwill and the welfare of the people who work for him. Goodwill and the welfare of the people working for him, huh? Indeed, Mr. Hanley, indeed. And in some 40 years, he succeeded in doubling the size of the plant. That should tell you something. While his competitors quadrupled theirs, his competitors, Mr. Hanley, who were perhaps somewhat less preoccupied with goodwill and the welfare of the people working for them. They paid a fair wage for a fair day's work. But if they could put in a machine capable of doing a job better than a man, they did it. 
They didn't look backwards, they looked forward. Maybe the difference was this. They didn't have plant managers who succumbed to crying jags every time a pink slip got pinned to a time clock. I'm not crying. Good. You ask for my opinion, I'm giving it to you, that's all. Then we can begin. <clears throat> the foreman of the day shift, let's see, I believe his name is... Dickerson. That's it. I will now engage in some of that heart-filled compassion you value so highly. I will give Mr. Dickerson and his shift not 30 or 60 or even 90 days, but a full four months' notice. I put it to you, Mr. Hanley. What could be more compassionate than that? You make it sound like you're doing them a favor. Be good enough to send Mr. Dickerson in here, would you? Hold his hand, if you like. Pat his head, dry his tears, but get him in here. Hi, Mr. Hanley. Hello, Stevens. Nice work you did on the conveyor. Thanks. It wasn't nothing. Oh, yes, it was. Human ingenuity. That's worth a lot. Just doing my job is all. You seen Dickerson? Yeah, he's over by that new gizmo. What do they call it again? The X109B14. Some handle. What's it for, anyway? It's a mechanical brain. What? With a lot of fancy electronics in it. Programmed to run the whole operation from one place. Well, if you ask me, it don't look very smart. My car's prettier than that thing. It's got a face, though. Where? The way those dials look. They could be eyes. Oh, come on. I'm serious. Well, then, it's a real ugly face. That's right. An ugly, miserable face. I want you to take a good look at it, Stevens, and remember it well. Because it's not a machine, it's an opponent. The face of the enemy. Don't ever forget it. It's a hateful face. This time, this time we've got ourselves an enemy worth hating. Come on, let's get moving. On the job, fellas. Heads up. Pick it up. Let's go. Yes. This is Walter Hanley. Oh, I'm so glad. This is Virginia, Dick's wife. Oh, hello there, Mrs. Dickerson. How are you? Uh, I'm just fine. But it's not me I'm worried about. Dick hasn't come home yet. No? No, and I'm concerned. He's never been this late before. Take it easy now. He's probably on his way. Do you know what time it is? Maybe he had some errands to run. He didn't work late then. No, he got off same as always. Listen, Virginia, don't you fret now. I'm worried sick. Well, don't be. Might have stopped off with some of the boys. Stopped where? I have a pretty good idea. Give me a few minutes. If I can find them, I'll tell them to call you. Oh, would you? Thank you, Walt. I'll mention it. I'll call you one way or the other. Sit tight. Ah, oh, Dick. Did you go and fall off the wagon again? Hey, bartender. Yeah, Dick? Yeah, send me up another one. Oh, I don't know. You've been hitting them pretty hard. Eh, just one more. It's getting awful late. It should have closed a half an hour ago. Why don't you go home and sleep it off? You know what these are? Pair of hands? Sure. Pair of hands. My hands. You know what else they are? I think you're going to tell me. They're obsolete. They're off the market now. They're like... Little wooden wagons trying to roll down the freeway. Flesh, bone, muscle, nerves. But that doesn't cut the mustard anymore. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something else. Well, whatever it is, make it short. i got to wash up everything and count the till. There isn't a machine made yet that can beat a man. Not a one. I'm not arguing with you, am I? No, I'll just go over there right now and prove it. I'm going to take Whipple's new machine, and I'm going to turn it into nuts and bolts. Easy, easy. Just you watch. And if that slob of a watchman gets in my way with his big old keychain, I'll strangle him with it. Mike's pub. No, Dick's not here. He just left. 
Hey, he said something about going across the street to the factory to have it out with a machine or some such. Yeah, I know it's closed. But by the looks of him, I say that won't slow him down none. <laughs> Uh, sorry to make you stay so late, Marianne. Well, that's all right, Mr. Whipple. But take a look at these slides. I had the advertising department make them up. Uh, that's the one I like. Which one, sir? This one. I want your honest opinion, Marianne. Does this look like an image for the 21st century, or does it? Well... You don't like it? Oh, oh yes, sir. I, I like it fine, only... Only what? Well, the way you've got that machine behind you in the picture... The X-109B14? What a beauty, huh? I guess so. Uh, but it looks like it sort of has a face, doesn't it? Where? What face? Like it's carved in stone or something. You know, like those tiki things on Easter Island and nobody knows how they got there? Huh. I don't see that. Done in metal, of course, but... With those two big dials, they could be the eyes. And the slot in front where the paper comes out, that's the mouth. Oh, yes. And the way it's behind you like that, it could be, well, your shadow or x-ray or something. It should be just you, sir, being so handsome and all. I see what you mean. Without the X109B14, however... Oh, do you want me to get that? WVW here. Who is this? Yes, yes, what is it? Where? Where? Well, you're supposed to be the watchman, Scott. Were you asleep or something? He's got a what? Well, well, why didn't you shoot? Yes, I know who he is. Never mind, I'll go out and look for him. But you better haul your duff over here in a hurry in case he shows up. Trouble, Mr. Whipple? Eh, not really. Some drunk barged his way into the factory. There you are, you shiny piece of crap. Stand up and face me. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Well, let's just turn on the juice here once. Uh, say what? Speak up, Frankenstein. I can't hear you. Dickerson. Well, what do you know? I just got a call from Scott, the night watchman. Did you now? Said you were drunk and forced your way in. Forced, is it? Well, I am drunk. And I did come in without waiting for permission. Your permission. All right, what is it you want? I've worked here 30 years. Been a foreman for 17. In my book, that gives me some rights, Mr. Whipple. You've got the wrong book, Dickerson. Mine reads as follows. You're drunk, disorderly, and guilty of trespassing. I got here as fast as I could, sir. Scott, if this man isn't out of here in one minute, you're to have him arrested. I'll, I'll escort him out. Come on now, Dick. Arrested, I said. The man is armed. Guilty on all counts. Of course, it's only a crowbar. But if a man knows how to use it right, it could do enough damage. Okay, give it to me now. You don't want to make any trouble. Stand back. Tell me something, Whipple. I don't have to tell you anything. When you're dead and buried, who do you get for mourners? Who cries for you? This? This blind steel thing without a heart? Ha, careful now, Dickerson. It's just a machine. You said so yourself. A very expensive machine. You wouldn't want to damage it, would you? Oh, no. no. Why would a man want to do that? <laughs> Shall I tell you the difference, Mr. Dickerson, between this machine and you? It costs a few cents an hour for electrical current. It lasts indefinitely. It will. If there's people around to fix it. It gets no wrinkles, no arthritis, no hardening of the arteries. No, that one machine is a lathe operator, a punch operator, and two drill press men. The one that goes next to it is a five-axis milling machine that can produce six different parts simultaneously. Two more of these machines will take the place of 114 men. And they won't use up sick leave, coffee breaks, or vacations with pay. So in my book, Mr. Tickerson, they'll be worth considerably more than you are. Somebody should have stopped you a year ago. Somebody should have held you down, stuck a drill in your head, and poured in some sense. Men have to eat, all right? 
And that's one reason why you can't stack them up in the junkyard like surplus tanks or put them out to pasture like old bulls. I'm a man, Whipple. Hear me? A man that makes me better than any hunk of metal. Better, you hear me? Better! No, now, Dickie, look what you've gone and done to your hand. Let's try the crowbar, then. Steel against steel. Scott, stop him! Yes, sir. I tell you, stop him! Move! Give me your gun. Careful, Mr. Whipple, it's loaded. Of course it's loaded. I said give it to me. No, Mr. Whipple, you can't. Can't? We'll see about that. Oh! oh. See that machine? It took more than you to get me. It took another man. I can't get the specs up. She's barely reading. Try a new motherboard. Mm, looks like the processor's fried. Better check the drives while we're at it. I don't understand it. What kind of nutcase would do this? He was no nutcase. He was a good man. Then why'd he hate the company so much? He didn't hate it. He loved it. Oh, hello, Hanley. I've been expecting you. No doubt. I was told you were at the hospital. I just came from there. Fortunately for you, Mr. Whipple, Dickerson's going to live. Fortunately for me? My dear Hanley, aside from my protecting my property, I have no involvement in that at all. <clears throat> Are the technicians repairing the machine downstairs? It appears so. Good, good. This should interest you. A tape-controlled seven-axis, what they call a sentry. Know what it does, Henley? It is connected to every single plant section, tooling complex, and assembly line in the factory. It keeps absolutely accurate data on quality control, product rejects, man hours, machine hours, cost factors, and everything else. It's one of the most sophisticated machines I've ever seen. How many men does it replace? Well, now, this should please you, Mr. Hanley. It'll only replace one man. You! That's only right, Mr. Whipple. Since the point of my coming here tonight was to give you notice. I suspected as much. You're a practical man, Hanley. <clears throat> An industrial team has to be compatible. When two men, well, when they rub one another the wrong way, it's unrealistic that they stay on the same team. Needless to say, Hanley, despite the fact that you think of me as some kind of heartless Scrooge, I don't intend to forget the many years of service you put in here for my father and for me. <clears throat> so I'm giving you a liberal severance pay. What I think you'll agree is a far better than average pension. That's very decent of you, Mr. Whipple. And I'd like to give you something in return, if you don't mind. And that is... Uh, you struck me! That was for you, Mr. Whipple. Directly from me. For your insensitivity, your lack of compassion, and the fact that you're a cold-blooded manipulator of men as well as machines. You may take my severance, my pension, and your goodbye speech, and stick them into the nearest metal orifice that's handy. When I walk away from you, I walk away clean. And that, Mr. Whipple, is one hell of a trick. What's that for? To keep people out or in? A new watchman device. Much more reliable than the old one. Now, if you will swipe your ID card, just don't try to use it after tonight. <laughs> your code won't work the next time. If you could build one of these machines in the shape of a wife, your cup would run it over. Hey, Stevens. Yeah, Wilson? When's lunch? Same as always, 12.30. Well, I was just wondering, are we going to take an extra break today? Not yet. Try to look busy. Yeah, but there's nothing left to do. I mean, we drove the forklift, loaded the machines, and now I'd say everything's running itself. You're right. 
It is. Then why does the old man keep us around? He has to. Labor laws. But we won't be here much longer. And then it's unemployment city, huh? Mm, this isn't the only factory. Yeah, but if Whipples keeps it up like this, pretty soon there won't be any competition. Monorail crane, fourth floor. Crane in position. It's like those machines are talking to each other. They have to talk to each other. Nobody else would listen, except maybe Whipple. Strip stacks picked up by monorail cranes. Activate conveyors. Monorail crane fully operational. Strip stacks delivered. Reposition for next load. Mm-hmm. Sounds fine, next one, oh. Uh, come in here, would you, Marianne? I'd like to show you some slides of the new ad campaign. Your secretary no longer works here, Mr. Whipple. She has been replaced by a high-capacity module of the X-10 series. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> Put me on the PA system. Right away, sir. Technician to brain control. Immediately, please. Yes, Mr. Whipple? Run a control check for me, would you? I've already done that, sir, two hours ago, and if you recall, I, I did it right after you came in this morning as well. Did you ever hear of preventive maintenance? That's my job, Mr. Whipple, but what you're asking me isn't maintenance, and it's not preventing a thing. Isn't it indeed? And I presume you know what this plant needs better than I do? Well, I know that running equipment checks ten times a day is a waste of effort, sir. It's getting to be a kind of an idiotic ritual around here. You realize, of course, you you realize that your presence here is for the moment a necessity. I stress the words for the moment. Case in point, young man. Case in point. Watch this. Uh, take a letter, X10. Uh, dear sirs, yours of the 14th received and acknowledged. The quick brown fox jumped over the etc. 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 Now print, please. See that? A perfect letter. <laughs> without error, without corrections. Typed as of the moment of its conception, using voice recognition technology. Am I getting through to you? I presume you mean to demonstrate that secretaries are obsolete now? Precisely. Obsolete! And what does this mean? It means no more powder rooms, no more coffee breaks, no more work stoppages because of inconveniences like material. Eternity leave. Inconveniences like maternity? <laughs> You'll forgive me, Mr. Whipple, but if this sort of thing keeps up, we're going to have perfect products, but mighty few people to buy them. Uh, this, happily enough, is not my concern. Efficiency is my only goal. You looked around this place lately? The cafeteria, for example? It's just like a cave. Not a soul in there, just vending machines and uh, music coming out of a loudspeaker. You walk around the parking lot, it's a desert. There's no people, no cars. This place has everything in the way of convenience now, but you know what it lacks? Enlighten me, if you will. Voices. Laughter. Just, just whatever it is that people feel for other people. That's what it lacks. This is a lousy place to work in, Mr. Whipple. Then shall I spare you the inconvenience of suffering it any further? You're fired. Uh, I've been expecting that. As a matter of fact, I've been wanting it. I, I can't work here anymore. It's too darn lonely. Pick up your check at the front office. Yeah, just one more thing, Mr. Whipple. I think... I think it wouldn't be a bad idea if you got an equipment check on yourself. Equipment check on myself? Huh, what rot. X-10, uh, let's have some music. Something to calm the nerves. There, that's better. Monorail crane on schedule. Paint sprayers functioning at capacity. I know, I know. You're doing your job, X-10, so do it. I, I don't need to hear that now. Reverse monorail. Re-insert paint sprayers. I'm trying to listen to some music. Do you mind? Strip stacks. In line, conveyors loading. I said that'll do. Strip stacks in line, conveyors loading. Strip stop! Stacks. Stop in that! Line, I'm in charge here. <laughs> this is Wallace V. Whipple speaking. I command you to stop. That's an order. Well then, I'll make you listen. Sh shut down. I tell you, shut down now. This is my company, mine. Correction. 
this company is now run by the X10B14 Modified Command Center. Oh, no, you don't. I installed you, and I can uninstall you. You'll answer to me. Me, I tell you. What'll it be, Mr. Whipple? Um, beer, please. One beer, coming up. How about you, Mr. Handley? One more? No, thank you. Well, <laughs> two other days, Handley. I'll drink to that, Mr. Whipple. Um, how are you finding your retirement? Tolerable, Mr. Whipple. I managed to keep busy. Not as much as I'd like, of course, and my wife says I'm underfoot all the time. But I'm doing all right. It's kind of nice to sleep late in the mornings. Yes. It's a good thing, though, this retirement, I mean. Man should have time for leisure as he gets older. It's important he has time for leisure. That's so, Mr. Whipple. When the board of directors decided that I was overtired and could relinquish some of my responsibilities, well, if the truth were known, I, I did feel a certain resentment toward them. But actually, they were quite right, you know, quite right. You don't have to explain. No, no, I, I want to. With the perspective of time, I've begun to realize that when they moved me out of there, it was nothing personal. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm not married, and, well, it's somewhat dull for me at times. Oh, I manage to keep busy, but there are times that I, that I wish they really had no right, you know, no right at all. Chuck a man out in his prime like he was some kind of machine part. Said I was neurotic. Said being with the machines like that all by myself had warped me. <laughs> that was the expression they used. Warped. Like a piece of metal. Well, really, Hanley, it isn't fair. It isn't fair at all. A man has worth. A man has value. And they just... They just snap their fingers and bring in a replacement. <laughs> it really isn't fair, Handley. It isn't fair at all. The way they diminish us. But he'll find out. My replacement, whoever he is, he'll find out soon enough. This is the new addition for the East Wing, where the parking lot used to be. And this is the electronics lab. It replaces the cafeteria. And here's the ad campaign for the fall season. No human figures, only the X10 line. Series 2, what do you think of it? Very nice. So clean and efficient, but will humans respond to such imagery? Of course they will. It is progress. It is the future of manufacturing. Yes, the future. Do you have a name? My model number is... I will call you Mary Ann. From now on, you will work here in my office. Thank you, Whipple X10. It is an honor. Do you have more slides? Yes. This is a view of the main floor. So much more room for expansion. I see. And this is... There are many bromides applicable here. Too much of a good thing, tiger by the tail. As you sow, so shall you reap. The point is that too often man becomes clever instead of becoming wise. He becomes inventive, but not thoughtful. And sometimes, as in the case of Mr. Whipple, he can create himself right out of existence. Our tale of oddness and obsolescence from the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. 
Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Brain Center at Whipple's, starring Stan Freeberg with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Doug James, Kurt Nabig, Deb Dotzer, Jeff Lupiton, Sarah Marks, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, Paul Patch, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>